When we talk about transition, many of you maybe think, oh, transition is only happening when there is leadership change. But as you can see, it affects every part of society. Uh, those of us who are in the religious world, of which I am, it has also changed us. We have transitioned. Some of us, now I'm talking to a gadget. Just I'm looking at a small phone and I'm talking to it. And I used to be used, I was used to talking to people, live people. I know you are listening there, you think I'm talking to you, but right now I'm actually facing uh, a, a small phone here. So I've transitioned from talking to people to gadgets. And this has changed and sometimes it brings a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of stress. And so many people are going through stressful time. So communication has changed. So basically what am I trying to say? It is changing from regular either to radical or from radical to regular. And uh, for those of us who are in the, uh, in the, the circles of Christianity, we need to understand the biblical, some of the principles that can help us or can help you to tra make transition, better transition. What is transition? Uh, those of you can go to dictionary, it is an adjustment, making adjustment, transforming, change, change to. So the word transition means the passing from one condition or from one place or from one activity to another. Uh, from lukewarmness to heart, from death to life, from passive or to an activity or to active, from those of us who like talking to the walk, from lack to abundance, from mediocrity to a better action, from meetings for those of us who are in the ministry, to have ministry. Right now, we are so much involved with meetings and doing ministry through meetings. But we need to go beyond the and build movements, building movement. So from mechanical thing, mechanical to build, uh, build life. Uh, in the nation of Israel, they did or they did have a lot of transition. Be it in leadership or they were moving from bondage to freedom, freedom to bondage from one point. So they experienced a lot of transitions. And uh, that's why I like reading most of, of my Old Testament to look at it in the mirror with the New Testament and to our day-to-day -day living. So I find a lot of benefits from the Old Testament. So you and me, we need some understanding. We need to understand, especially Christians, they need to understand the time we are living in. And it's my firm belief that in the middle of every transition and in the middle of uncertainty, we don't know what is going to happen. Christians leaders and the believers must have a better understanding of the times. You and me, if you are a believer, you must have a word about God regarding the mood of the times, the mood of your time, wherever you are. So let me make the first two statements before even I go to the book of books. Life is full of, trans of transition. So let me make two, two statements. Number one, we can't live without transition. I repeat number one, we can't live without transition. You cannot, I cannot. I have been involved, I have seen and experienced transition, good and bad in my own life and in people's life, in our country, in our nation, in our society. Transitions are there. That's the first statement I want to make. We can't live without transitions. Number two statement, we can't grow without transition. You can never grow if there's no transition. So growth comes of, because of transition. On the first statement, let me qualify the first statement. We can't live without transitions. Physically, our life changes. You were once upon a time a child. Now, you are either grown up, a young man, or an old man like me. Psychologically, we change. You don't think the way you were thinking when you were a child. Before you got married, you were thinking different. When you got married, you started thinking different. So that's socially, we change. How many of you can really remember or have 
close friends from high school, like some of us who left high school 40, 40 plus years ago. How many of you can remember? How many are you still keeping friendship? So our lives take different paths. Spiritually, we change, we grow. Uh, the, when I got, uh, when I became a Christian, I was very uh, on fire for God, and I still I am. But that time, I different, I behaved different. I was outgoing in everything. Not, not anymore. Maybe I don't know whether I'm spiritually mature or I'm spiritually becoming a child. But what I meant to say here, we can't live life without transition. The second, the second statement that I said, we can't grow without transition. Let me just also qualify that, that time and experience brings wisdom. Time and experience brings wisdom. There are two ways to learn, by being mentored or being mentored, or by making mistakes. And when you make a mistake, you become a better person by learning from them. So you, you can't grow. That's how you trans transition. You can't grow without transition. Be it in education or knowledge, actually it opens more doors when you have more knowledge. Culture is another thing. And by the way, culture waits for no one. I guess right now we have begun a new culture from this COVID-19. Uh, this time we are distancing ourselves, we are washing our hands until some of us are complaining that our hands have become so soft uh, because of the detergents we are using now and then. So, and this, I hope it will continue. So culture changes for those of us uh, who are so cultural when it comes to death. Now you can uh, bury your death of your relative within 48 hours or in a few days, and then no more eating as we used to do. So culture cannot wait for you, it's changing. And I believe that some of this culture might continue. So what I'm saying, we can't grow without transition. So culture grows with time also. So then you may ask, George, what do we need to know all about transition? I'm going to share a few, uh, a few principles uh, from the book of books. And those of you who carry your, your paper one or from your phone, maybe you are not going to use your phone because you are listening and watching, but you can open your, the book of books, the Bible, as they call it, Joshua chapter one, and uh, reading from verse one to nine. And because we may not have time, I want to leave time for us to discuss and talk. I'll just go maybe, as I get the principles, I'll tell you from what verse, but it's chapter one of the book of Joshua. This is a book when people are doing transition in leadership and uh, you think that's all it does, but the principles I'm going to explain here applies in every situation of transition even though it is being used for uh, leadership transitions, as many of us know. And uh, the principles, number one, and I want you to note it down because some of this will help you, whether it's in marriage, whether it is uh, high school, or whether it's in your college, whether you are a young man, it doesn't matter. Whatever transition that you are going to meet or you will face, or you are facing for that matter even now, this, principles don't change. So number one, don't be distracted by the past. Do not be distracted by the past. The two key words there are distracted and past. In Joshua chapter one, chapter, nine, chapter one, first one, and two, now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, wherefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Do not be distracted by the past. I want you to know here it says Moses is dead. So Moses no more. The past is gone. Do not live on the past. He's dead, he's gone. Now, now, now Joshua, it is you. Eh? These children of Israel, they cannot again depend on Moses. He's dead. And many of us spent a lot of time talking of the past. Even recently, when two, three months ago, 
We used to say our normal time, our normal days, when we were in the office, when we were going to Matatus or whatever, we have been talking about that. But that's, that's the path, it is gone. And if you keep talking of the past, you are going to miss today. And of course, now we are getting used to this kind of life of Zoom and that. And if we continue talking about this all the time, we might, we might, we might also miss tomorrow. So transition, you must understand. Transition is that you must continue to talk where you are. If we talk now and we keep on saying this is the order, this is what we need to do, we'll miss the future. And Isaiah, uh, the prophet Isaiah, I'm reminded of that, chapter 43, and I think verse 18 or 19, they remember ye not, actually you are told, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Neither consider the things of old. This is the scripture that's from this book of the prophecy, the prophet Isaiah. Then he says in verse 19, I think, behold, I will do a new thing. After COVID-19, that's why I'm talking about transition. God is going to do a new thing. I know transition, you, you don't understand this big word. You, there's going to be a new thing. God is going to do a new thing. And then it will continue. If you read there, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Now it shall bring forth. Eh? It will bring forth. Eh? And then he asks you, shall you not know it? And then you'll say, I will make a way. And that's what I love that scripture. For. I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. In other words, miracles are going to happen. Right now, even economically, we are going to face a lot of economic hardships. But a believer, and that's why I said earlier, a Christian, a believer, we should have a word from the Lord. So don't dwell and be distracted of your past life. Do not dwell of the past. That's principle number one. Don't be distracted by the past. One man said, I can't remember, but I read it somewhere. No matter how hard the past was, you can always begin again today. I read it somewhere, but I can't remember. But he said, no matter how hard the past was, we might be now living at a uh, hard, hard life. But tomorrow, no matter how yesterday was, you can begin again today. And I want to challenge you and encourage each one of us that yes, life might be tough, but you are going to, to, to this just a while, transition is going to come and you can start again. Well, I hear people say, oh, you know, when I was young, oh, I, I'm not, of course, I'm no longer young. When I was young, now I'm old, you do this and this. Before I got married, before I did all this, well, before coronavirus, even now people are talking, before coronavirus came, we were hard with this, this, and this, and that. Let me encourage you, don't be distracted on the past. There's something coming tomorrow. Joy comes in the morning. So number one, they don't be distracted. Number two, quickly, I don't think I have time, and I have a number of principles that I've gotten from this Joshua chapter one. And if you look chapter one, verse two, there's another something there you need to, to see. And verse two, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross the Jordan. Principle number two, don't be deaf to his promptness, to God's promptness. Don't be deaf. You need to be having a listening ear. What is God saying? Don't be slow to hear. It is arise and go. Uh, in NIV, actually, it says, get ready. Uh, for, I'm reading from a New American a Standard Version. Uh, it says, get, get uh, arise. But NIV says, get ready. Getting ready is you, need, you have to be ready all the time. Get ready. Don't be dull. Don't be dull. Uh, you'll be left behind if you are slow. Don't miss God's blessing. Get ready. We want to cross over. Uh, this the children of Israel. Uh, the most uh, Joshua was being told, get ready to cross the Jordan. So are you ready to cross? The transition is coming, and it has always been there. All the transitions come, you must be ready. You must get ready. You must arise. So don't be deaf. Eh? Uh, remember the promptness, what God is saying. What is it that you need to do? 
during this uh, COVID lockdown and the curfew and so forth, I think God wanted to, more especially Christians, to be, have this curfew that they can be home and also listen and read the word of God. You have more time to read. And if you are at home for these two months and you never read the Bible, I want to tell you, my friend, you have missed something. You have a few days to go, so it's never late. You can start today. This is a transition period. And we must understand transitions are important, as I said earlier. So don't be deaf to God's his promptings. Number three, don't doubt his promises. Don't doubt God's promises. In verse three to four, actually, they are being promised. Every place, now Joshua is being told, every place, and you are being told, every place on which the, the soul of your foot trends, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. Some of you don't know how to claim your territories. I will go. First of all, I told you, get ready. Arise and go. Now, don't doubt. This is what was to promise. There's a lot of promises for every person, for every Christian. God does not lie. His promises are true and amen. It's not like man that we should lie. The righteous shall live by faith. You and me, we should hope for the best. And actually, the Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse, uh, I believe that 8, uh, onwards there said, the righteous shall live by faith, and he does not, he has no pleasure on those who shrink back. Some of us like shrinking back, and the Bible said, God has no pleasure to such kind of people. And I'm here to encourage you, transition, don't shrink back, don't doubt God's promises. And if you don't know them, search for them, search for your promise. Maybe my promises are different than yours, my blessings are different than yours. Don't compare me and you, but I want to challenge you. Go to the scripture, search. Look for the promises that God has given. All of us, we have been given a promise. So don't doubt God's promise. And verse 3 and 4, Joshua was being told that as I promised, as I was with Moses, and these are the things. In fact, these promises, if you go back to the Genesis, Abraham had been promised this territory, which is being told here. Abraham had been told, and it's going to be fulfilled. It doesn't matter how long it has taken, my friend. I don't know how long you have been waiting for your blessings or for whatever. It is coming. Just don't doubt God. It is because you doubt. That's why maybe it's being delayed. So that's a principle that don't doubt God's promises. God does not lie. It's not like mine. Number four, depend. And this is what I love most. Depend on his protection. In every transition, don't depend on your knowledge and your understanding and your strength and your education. It's good to have all those skills, but depend on God's protection. It is not your position that you hold. It is not the authority that you hold, whether in society, in your family, it doesn't matter in political, it is not what you think you hold. In our time and everywhere here, oh, the law says, the constitution says, it is good to have all those. If you depend on those, they will, man will fail you. And I've, I've seen, and you are seeing, I believe. Eh? If you hold to those pieces of papers that this is what the law says, you depend on them, they will fail you. But God will never fail you. He will always protect you. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, verse 24, and uh, if you read the same Joshua, actually, chapter 23, and verse 9, you will see God's protection. And in this chapter 1, verse 5a, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Did you hear that? Joshua was being told, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. I didn't say that. That's God speaking and he's telling you and me. During a transition like this, depend on God's protection, not of your, what is your security? Your mother, your barber, or your riches, or your property, what is it? Your organization, I want to tell you, that one will fail you, and you'll be failed, you, you will see failure. But today, depend on his protection. God will, that's a principle. Number five, number, number six, I believe, number five. Be directed 
by his presence. Be directed by his presence, God's presence. You see, he was, Joshua is being told here, if you look at verse 5b, where we just read, uh, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. And then he continues to say, I will not fail you, not for verse 9. If you go verse 9, part of verse 9c, he says like this, of course, he said, uh, do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. You'll be directed wherever you are. His presence, God will direct you. He was with Moses. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, as I mentioned a few minutes, minutes ago, Abraham, this whatever you see here, Abraham had been promised in Genesis chapter 15. Eh? He was promised. He knew that he needed God's direction. My friend, you is listening to me. You need God's direction and his presence. Not only direction, but his presence. When God is leading you and his presence is with you, you will never go wrong. The transition will be smooth. Smooth, sometimes they are rough, but when God is there, that roughness is just to make you a better person, better woman, a better man. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. Never, never be directed by yourself. You need God to direct you and to have his in your, in your presence. Uh, number six principle on transitions, whichever it is, whatever you want to transit into, remember these are principles, they don't change. Desire God is power. Desire God is power. Whom are you depending upon? My children can depend on my power of the parents or dad or mom, but it doesn't matter. You need God's power. In chapter 1, verse 6a, be strong and courageous. Be strong and be courageous. For you shall give these people possession. I'll come to that later. Even and then verse 7a, they are only be strong and, and very courageous. And then if you go again, verse 9a, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. That is the power you need. Strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. God has not given us the spirit of fear. The reason why transition, that's even right now we are full of fear, even during this COVID-19, is because we know that we don't know that we don't know that no, are, there's a lot of unknown before us. But you need God's power, not human power. In, in, in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 and verse 7, you also say, be strong and be courageous. So when facing transition, friends, you need to be strong. You need to desire God's power. And that power cannot come from any other other than the Almighty God. Amen. So, number seven, I want to go quickly so that we can have time. Uh, number seven, in verse 6b, which you have just read, is strong, for you shall give these people possession of the land. In transition, you need to delight, this is number seven now, delight in his prices or gifts. God gives you a price. Delight in his prices. As you run, there is a crown. There is always a price at the end to get. So delight in, his, in those prices. In other words, there's something to gain. In this case, the inheritance, prosperity, and good success. The blessings of God are on your way. Delight in his prices. Many of us, even with small prices, we don't delight. We don't get excited. Even this morning, did you get delighted just by waking up and say, thank you, Lord, for this day? That's a gift, a price for free. Recently, I read on this coronavirus. I don't know if this person was over 100 something years. And um, he, was, he, 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 he was infected with this virus. And uh, two days, he was uh, hospitalized. But after three days, he became better. And uh, his, uh, his bill, the doctor told you, your bill is 5,000 euros, to somewhere in Europe. Uh, 5,000 euros or a pound, British pounds. Then the old man started crying. He cried. Then the doctor was surprised. Why are you crying, old man? I'm crying because 
two, three days have been admitted, you are charged me 5,000 euros or British pound. And yet I've lived over 100 years. How much should I pay God? I don't know. Some of us have lived over 60 years now. And uh, we don't know even to get delighted of the price of life that we have. And how much is it? What is the value? The old man thought 5,000 euros for three days. And then he, he tried to multiply for his years. He had lived over 100 years. Just that's something that happened recently. So we need to be delighted about his price. And God gives us a lot of gifts daily. But many of us do not have that delight. We don't get appreciated. That was principle number seven. You need to be delighted in, his, in God's prizes or gift. Number eight. This is like an action, obedience. Do and obey his principles, whatever. Verse seven B in chapter one, uh, it says, uh, only be strong and courageous and be careful to do according, be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, you are my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. Do and obey. You know, many of us do not know. Even the little, this coronavirus has taught us on how to obey, but many of us don't. We put our masks on the neck, and there's no nose here, and there's no mouth here. But somehow, we are just disobedient creatures. Instead of covering our nose, we cover our neck. And here we are told, do and obey his principles. In, chapter, uh, in verse 8 there, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from you, your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. You see, simple do's is what we don't do. That's why we fail to get our blessings. Observe all, keep all, and then you'll be successful. Do and obey. You know, doing is different. And obedience, I don't have time to talk about obedience. Many of us do, 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 do. But are you obeying or are you just doing it? So, and that's why some, somewhere I says obedience is better than sacrifice. So, the principle here, do and obey God is principles, what he says. In this case, we need to read the word of God. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Believers, Christians, wherever you are, if you want to succeed in life in whatever transition you are going through, even what economic uh, difficulties which has yet soon coming and is already there, are you meditating on the word of God? That's how you are going to find success. That's how you are going to find peace of, mind, of your mind. But without which transition, as I said, would either make you behave abnormally, just as we have been told in the Bible. What of the cow. Number nine, and maybe the last, because I want to give time, do not be dismayed or panic. In verse nine, have I not commanded you, be strong and correct, do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do not tremble, don't fear, don't, be, don't panic, be sober. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Be sober. And many of us, when transition comes, we are never sober. We just become crazy and uh, fearful and uh, we, we are not unsure what is going to happen. And therefore, you try to do A, B, and C. You know, panicking, when you panic, you do things in the wrong without thinking. But we need to be sober. Do not be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. I know all of us, humanly speaking, we get fear. What am I going to do? I know I'm talking to people who have lost their jobs, whose salaries have been cut to half. Uh, this morning I was actually reading something, somebody telling me that he's home to 50% of salary because he feels the money is not there, which is true. We can understand that. But then, are you going to be dismayed? The one who is being affected? Do not. It's a principle. Yes. Fear comes, but be strong and be courageous as we have read. In conclusion, my, fr my friends, my dear listeners, all what I've said cannot be able to be done without God. Transitions without God is transition 
that will kill you fast. You need to be in Christ. You need to have a higher power to enable you to have good transition. Transition will be a norm if you are a Christian, if you are a believer. Only those who are led, and I dare to say this, only those who are led by the Lord Jesus Christ can be withstand any transition, any challenges of transition. Personally, I've gone through many transitions. I have seen many transitions. And in which of those, if I had time to tell you each one of the instances of transition I have, uh, it was tough. My wife can testify this. I can give an example because I'm sure she says it to me. Even before I got married, marrying her was a big problem. But I overcome, I overcame it. And now we are still married for more than 40 years. So that's just an example. Maybe you're going through some difficulties one or the other. I want to tell you, with God in your side, with God on your side, you can succeed. You don't have to be stressed. I invite you to know this person who has made me to succeed in all my life, in all my transitions, whether on work or in family level, it is because I put the almighty God first. I want, to, I want you to know, if you invite this God, and you can only do it through Jesus Christ, who has made me successful in all my transition, you can also be successful in all transition. Many fear transitions, don't want to see other transition. What is going to happen? And it is easy to pray this simple prayer. You can only say, Lord Jesus, God Almighty, today I invite you to come into my life and change me and give me courage, give me power so that I can face all types of transitions. I cannot do it with my strength. Help me, O oh Lord, that I may be successful. By faith, I receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you, if you just add those simple words and uttered them, or no, you can utter them anytime, I can assure you, you are going to be successful. Transitions will not be a threat. Transitions will be just a pushing you to the next level. Transitions are there for your good. Transitions are there to make you uh, be a better person. As I said, they can make you grow in whichever life you are in, whether socially, economically, if you, are a, if you are a business person, if you don't get some losses, you, not make, you never make profits. Many people just want to make. It is when you make losses, say, what made me make a loss? Then you can improve and make a better profits. So we can't live without transitions. We can grow. We can't grow without transition. With those many, many words that I've said, I think we have about 15 or so minutes. I want us to interact. And... Uh, we are free to interact, and my moderator, my dear, can lead that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Reverend George, uh, for sharing about transitions. That is something that has affects all of us. And I want to invite uh, anyone who has a question now to ask or to comment about transitions. Anyone who has a comment, uh, they can they can or a comment or a question. Uh, kindly ask now. You can unmute your mic and uh, comment or ask a question. Anyone who has a comment or a question? I see Charles Mambolea has a... There's a hand there. I don't know whether it's just to... Charles, do you want to say something? No, I just liked the, the message about transition. That's all. That's why I put the thumbs up. Ah, okay, great. Can I make a comment? Yes, Peter, you can make a comment. Yeah, I think um, yeah, two things that I have learned about that transition. And now, my, my, my question, my question was between now a leader and those people who are 
and to where God wants them to be. The book of Joshua, where he just read, and we hear that uh, God um, spoke to Joshua for him to lead his people to cross over to the land. Now, my question is between the leader and the if people don't uh, get their picture for the one who has been chosen to, to lead people where they are supposed to be, how does that, that one um, maybe uh, make people believe that this is the person or the leader that the Lord has chosen uh, to lead us where we are supposed to be? Maybe people being led by themselves. I just want to be Thank you, Peter. That's a very wonderful, nice question, especially in the area of leadership and leading. And uh, all of us, we are either leading or you are being led. Those of you who are married, you lead your wife and your children. And you try to lead them one way or the other, they, they rebel. You say, no, that's not the way to go. But God has given you the responsibility to lead. Let me say this transition is never easy but sometimes it is necessary for it to happen and to force it on those whom you are leading. Why? Because whoever has been given the function or the leadership uh, uh, responsibility, then it is his responsibility lest he uh, be asked by God, why did you not do when I gave you the responsibility? So your question, if I understand it well, what about these people you are leading, they become rebellious, they don't want to do what you are leading? You do what God has done, and of course, if I had time, I'll tell you what happens with the various children of Israel. And if you go to eat, you find God came down and he punished them. So the leader should lead, and the leader should proclaim what God has told him to do, or what he has told him uh, to go and proclaim to the people. And he does so, he has done well. If he doesn't, then it's also wrong. So the, uh, when you are in leadership, you don't fear to make those transitions. And I could go further and say, you can always be responsible to, to push the transition. Even where we live right now, you, you never agreed to go and stay at home, but you are commanded, stay home and be safe. And you had no option, you did it, you had to obey. So you see, that's, that's us, these human beings, sometimes we don't obey. And that's why I gave an example that uh, the leaders speak what is right to be spoken. But the followers may decide not to, but there's always consequences to that kind of uh, 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 those who are being led and they don't do that. I don't know whether I'm answering your question, Peter. Yeah, you have answered it. You have answered it. Thank you for that. Great, thank you, Peter Ludenio. Any other person who has a comment or question? I'm seeing in the in, uh, in the in the uh, in the chat option, okay. Teacher Delvin is saying thanks for the insights. Kindly shed light on eternal transitions. That is life to death. Maybe someone has been ill for a while and feels soon their time on earth is winding. How can one prepare his family, friends? Yes. Have you seen that chat? Yes, you can now answer that. Thanks, Teacher Delvin. Thank you. That's a good question. I didn't mention that each one of us go through transition. If you are, uh, if no death has ever happened in your family, soon is coming, by the way. So that's an assurance I'm giving you. If there's no death that has ever happened in your family, it is coming. Uh, I, one, I'm one of those who have gone through that, through my own experience. When my mom passed away, uh, it was not easy, but I want to tell you, Everyone, right now I'm preparing other people now to be ready for their, their loved ones. So, and that's a transition and it's difficult. But from those of us who are Christians, and this is what I want to tell you, the Bible is very clear. It is appointed, listen, it is appointed for you and me to die. So that is not an option, it is appointed. It's an appointment. But what we should worry about is what happens after death. So here's where we need to prepare people 
hey, this is going to happen. And there's no, many of us, especially African, we like, death is a taboo. You can't tell somebody you're going to die. Or you see some of the patients in the hospital, you know for sure this one is dying. And you fear, and I believe in miracles, by the way, and many of us charismatic but the cost of preachers, we like giving hope when you know there's no hope. And yet it is written that we must die. So what I'm trying to say is this, you need to make assurance to people death is inevitable. Although some of them come in an unexpected way, but if it is sickness, and you know this is some of the sickness, and the Bible says, the Bible is very clear, there's even disciples ask, was this sickness unto death or was, and then Jesus answered his disciples, no, this is was to show that I can also do miracles so that the Son of Man can be glorified. But the key thing, it is our responsibility, Christians, believers, to give hope to those who are in the verge of death or who are having relatives who are soon dying. Prepare them by telling them, this is normal. These are normal. We have to die. It's not, I mean, the, the, some of us don't even like writing a will eh, when I die. Eh? And uh, for those of us who are in the ministry, I want to encourage people to write wills. When I die, this is what should happen to me. This is what should happen with my property. So prepare ourselves in advance. When, as young as you are, as old as you are, death is inevitable. So there's nothing wrong. The word of God is very clear about death. So just assure people that so long as you have eternal life, you have accepted Christ as your personal savior, then there is hope for tomorrow. Actually, it is better to die according to Apostle Paul. It is more gain to die than to live. To die is gain. So if you are a Christian, this should not uh, make you fear death, but rather should be at a point of helping others to know that so long as you have assurance of salvation, you have that Jesus in you, it's better to die. Uh, thanks, George. I like that part of writing a will. I have uh, not even thought about that, so that's, that's a good comment. <laughs> any, any other person? Any other person who has a comment? You can share in the chat platform or you can just ask. And since Anyone? I cannot see the chat, since I cannot see the chat, you are the one who can tell me what is there. Ah, okay. <laughs> I no no one but, has written in the chat so far. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, then you should then start winding up. Adija from Mombasa, you have any questions? Morning. Morning. Yeah, no, I don't have a question as for now. Okay. Yeah, but good, whatever has been spoken. Thanks, Hadija. So, yes, I guess then uh, we'll start winding up if you don't have any question. If you want uh, to engage further with uh, Reverend George Mamboleo, I'll just put his, num his number on the chat platform so that can be able to just uh, call him. I'm sure he's happy to receive any calls. If you want to give your life to Christ, you can talk either to him or to me. Let me just put the chat there. 841584. That is his number. Or you can also get him on email. The email is uh, george.mamboleo. At, uh, do I put the LM Kenya or the CCI? LM Kenya. Okay. So george.mamboleo at LM Kenya. So you can also engage him in either of those platforms. So thank you very much for joining us. We truly appreciate. I'll ask Reverend George to pray for us as we wind up. We have Facebook sessions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11, 11 to 12. The next session, you're going to be focusing on uh, COVID-19 and the whole aspect about mental health. You're going to be talking about that on Friday from 11 to 12. So thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Reverend. You can pray for us and end up the session. Okay, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you this particular hour. Thank you for this opportunity that we can connect from all over the world and be able to hear what you have to say even on this issue of transitions. Even <laughs> such a time like this, when we know we're going to transit to another time, 
because we know that COVID-19 will come to an end soon and we're not going to be distracted of what has happened. We will be able to be careful not to be deaf, but to hear your promptings on where we need to go. I pray for myself and for the rest of us that we shall not doubt your promises because your promises are true and amen. May we not depend on ourselves, but depend on you and on your word. Not only depend on the protection of the government, but to, be, to, be, to depend on the protection of the almighty God. I pray that your presence will go with us. And when your presence will go with us, we know we are safe. I pray, Lord, that if, as Lord said, that if you do not go with us, we're not going to move. And that's my prayer for today, that each one of us, we decide to have that power to go with you. Enable us by your spirit. And we know that we are more than Congress in Christ Jesus, because you are the only one who can lead us through the transition. You transited from heaven to earth, and you came and moved on earth and you lived here. And again, you transited to death and you rose again. And today you live and you sit on the right hand of God. And we know soon you are coming to take those who are ready because you are going to prepare a place. And that place that you have prepared is only for the prepared people. I pray that all of us will be prepared to meet you. We thank you and we bless you. And I pray for all of us, whoever has any need, Lord, may you Lord meet you at that or her at that point of need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The Lord bless us all. Amen.